In this lesson, we are going to be talking about the sum of a geometric series. So let's quickly break that down. So geometric, we should know by now, is, that was a very skewed line. Um, so geometric, we should know by now, is sequences or series, sorry, that go 2, uh, 6, 18, uh, 54. Okay, that's called a geometric sequence. It's called a sequence because we're separating it with semicolons. However, if I then had to go 2 plus 6 plus 18 plus 54, then all of a sudden we no longer call it a sequence, now we call it a series. So a series is when you are separating it with pluses instead of semicolons, and then the geometric is because we are multiplying by the same amount to get from the one number to the next. Okay, so we've already spoken about geometric sequences before. Now we're speaking about geometric series. So, to calculate the sum of a geometric series, you're going to use the following formula. So, we already know that A1 is term 1. R is the ratio, which is the number that you are multiplying with each time. And then, that's it. Oh, and then N is the number of terms. Number of terms. So here's our first example. So it's definitely geometric because we can see we're multiplying by 2 to get from one term to the next. So we can use the geometric series formula which goes like this. And so we can literally, well actually um, we can try for everything and let's see what we know. So A1 is term 1, that's 5. Wonderful. R is 2, that's how much we're multiplying with. We don't know how many terms there are. We know that this is the last term, but we don't know how many terms there are altogether. And then we can say 1 minus 2. So what we now need to do is we need to use the geometric sequence formula, which we learned about previously, which goes like this. Remember this one? And what we can do is we can say that this 5120 is the value, so that can go over here. A1 is 5, the ratio is 2. And then we can actually solve for n. And so the way that I would typically do this is remember you cannot multiply these two together because this n minus 1 is sort of blocking, well it's sort of with the 2 so it blocks the 5. So what I would do is I would actually divide by 5. So on the left hand side you would end up with 1024. And now here you can use logs if you would like or you can just realize that this number needs to be written as 2 to the power of something, okay? So let's try 2 to the 6. If you type in 2 to the 6 on your calculator, that's 64. Okay, that's a bit too small. Let's go 2 to the 8. 256. Okay, let's go 2 to the 10 maybe. There we go, 1024. Amazing. So we can change this to 2 to the power of 10. Now, remember that when you are solving an exponential equation, when these numbers are the same, you can just cancel them out. And so you now end up with 10 equals to n minus 1. Take the minus 1 to the left and you end up with n equals to 11. That means that there are 11 terms in this whole sequence. Now, I know some of you are sitting there and you're like, come on, bro. Are you telling me that we 5, 10, 20 and only 11 terms and we're going to end up with that? Absolutely, let me show you. So if you had to go 5, 10, 20, the next one would be 40, then it would be 80, then it would be 160, then it would be 320, 640, 1280, 2560, 5120. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Bam! You see, so this stuff is amazing. It's beautiful. It works. And so now we have 11 terms, so what we could now go and do is go back to this formula that we were busy with earlier, and we now know that n is 11. Go ahead, type it all on the calculator, or calculate it in your head if you want. That was a joke. And that's going to give us 10,235. What that actually means, by the way, is that if you had to go write out all those numbers that I just did, 320. 640, 1280, 2560, 5120. If you had to go add all of these numbers together, you would actually end up with that. That is what the S formula does. It works out the sum of all of the numbers. 
here's another one. So we know that this is geometric. Now a lot of learners, they say, oh look, we're dividing by two, but don't do it that way. Rather say, oh, we're multiplying by a half. That's what you rather want to do, okay? You don't want to look at what you're dividing with. You rather want to look at what you are multiplying it with. Now, some of you are like, yeah, but Kevin, my dude, how am I supposed to know that to go from 4,000 to 2,000, I'm multiplying by half? Now, how do I know that students struggle with that? Well, first of all, I've done this for long enough. Second of all, when I was a student, I had no idea that that, that, that was a thing. Like, I didn't know that. So what you rather do, if you want to work out R and you can't see it easily, take the second term, and divide it by the first term, and that gives you a half. That's a nice way to work out the value of r. Okay, so we know that this is geometric, so we can go ahead and write out our geometric formula, which goes like this. And so we can go fill in whatever we need, or whatever we can, sorry. So a1 would be the first term, which is 4,000. r is a half. We don't know what n is again. And there we go. So let's go work, use the geometric sequence formula, which is this one over here. And we know that the last term is 62.5. So that's the value. We know that term one is 4,000. We know that R is a half. And look at that, we can now go solve for N. So once again, I would divide by 4,000 on the left-hand side. And that gives us one over 64 and then we make that equal to one over two to the n minus one. So what we can do now, I mean, there's various ways that you could do this, but what I would like to do is change 64. I know that 64 is, I mean, you could play around like two to the four, that's 16, two to the five, that's 32, two to the six, that's 64. Thank you very much. So you could change that to two to the six, and then this can just stay as it is. What I would then do is take this to the top, so you end up with two to the negative six. And then I'll take this to the top. So it'll become two to the negative one to the power of n minus one, like that. Then I would just do exponent rules here, which says we should multiply. So that's negative n plus one. Now all of a sudden we have twos on both sides, so we can cancel out. And so if you cancel those out now, all of a sudden we end up with um, negative n plus one equals to negative six, and do your thing. So if you had to then go solve, uh, take the n to the left, take the six to the right, n would be seven. So there are seven terms in the sequence. So now we can come back to this equation, power of seven over one minus half. Go ahead, type it on the calculator, and you end up with 7,937.5. So if you had to go add up all of these numbers, and all the numbers in between, obviously. Um, there's not too many, there's only seven in total because that's how many terms there are. Uh, you would have a total of 7,937.5.